Two decades ago, half a century ago or more, and they've been striving to establish that communication with an eight, one or more alien species. I suspect they've done it. And a point I would add to that, you know, we have several uh, agencies in the government who boast that they're able to track everything that orbits above the United States or orbits our planet, down to the size of a carton of cigarettes or even a golf ball. Are we to believe, if they can do that, that they are unable, they cannot detect a disk that is 30 or 60 or 120 feet in diameter? Clearly, our government is detecting these things on a regular basis, and I object to the notion that they possess that information and are not willing or not duty-bound to share it with all of us. That government works for us, not the reverse. We can only take two more quick questions, Mr. Peter. Yes, sir. Yes, my name is Sean O'Sullivan. I'm from Lake Stevens here in the Coast. And first of all, Mr. Nori, it's a pleasure seeing you. I've listened to you for since you started at NRP4. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Davenport, I'm interested in, uh, interested in knowing your opinion of the book Day After Roswell mm -hmm. and how uh, valid that book is. Opinion about Day Roswell. Day After Roswell, by Roswell, of course. Well, a lot of good investigators, including Stan Friedman and uh, uh, a whole bunch of people have done some excellent investigative work on that one. They've interviewed all the pertinent witnesses and people who participated in it. And I think there almost certainly an incident occurred that involved, the Roswell incident was, as you probably know, not one craft, but two. There was one 75 miles to the northwest of Roswell then there was a second craft found by a group of geology students from the University of Pennsylvania out on the plains of Augustine. So it suggests to me that there may have been a collision, a mid-air collision, of, or maybe one shot down the other. I don't know. My suspicion is that the issue of competition that we all experience in our daily lives is probably the same in other civilizations in our galaxy. So I'm hoping that they are peaceful creatures when they come to our planet, but I have no guarantee of that. And this case that we looked at uh, earlier today with Mr. Jay Connell describing what he had seen suggests to me that there may be more competition than we wish were the case between aliens or between aliens and mankind. One of the cases that comes to mind that supports my statement is the tragic death of Mr. Todd Sees back in August of 2004. A gentleman who possibly may have taken a rifle shot at a UFO and 40 hours later they found his remains grossly mutilated, so grossly mutilated that his son could not even identify the remains of his father. And uh, remains a mysterious case. It's a case that uh, uh, David Politis and I both have an interest in. We've discussed it, and uh, he has an interest in pursuing it forensically. And let's take one final one for Mr. Dan. Hi, uh, my name's Allie, and I'm originally from New Hampshire. Oh, so, oh nice. Yes. So when I was 11 years old, um, I went down with my friend to get an ice cream cone, 